Hi, Teffel Dude here. Now if you're like me and you have quite a number of cassettes lying around, probably because you've recorded some songs on them, you've done some voiceovers, or maybe your granddad has some tapes with music that he can't really find on CD anymore. Well, we're going to show you how to put these onto MP3 through your laptop audio port. All you need to do is find a cassette recorder, as you can see here, and we're going to use two methods. The first method, and the main one of this video, is using the audio jack method. That way you don't have to lay out a lot of money. All you simply need to do is buy this jack where you've got the two pins. Now, the second method, which is the USB port, I did use the same cassette recorder because it also has a USB port. I bought one of these for that particular reason. This is probably the simplest method ever, which is why I'm going to do method one primarily, the audio way. Now, there was a third method I was going to do, but I decided to give that up because using this USB, I have it here, using this device with the USB, I found that it kind of skipped a bit when it was recording because it's going direct from here into the MP3 and it's not really done well. So I would avoid this method if you feel that your tapes are really important. Now let's begin. You're going to need obviously your laptop head jack and the pins and the player. Another thing you need is Realtek audio driver. Now if you don't have this well, let's say you don't know if you have it. The simplest way to find out if you have it is to click in the search bar and type in Realtek. As you can see, I've already typed it in once, but I'll type it in again. So you type in Realtek. If this comes up, Realtek Audio Manager app, then you have it. If it doesn't, then you're going to need to go to this website and download it. I'll leave the links below. And you simply need to download the driver of your choice. So mine was 64 bit, so I clicked here and then you download it. The second thing you're going to need later, while I'm on the web page, let me just show you the other things you're going to need to download is the Audacity free recorder. And you simply click on the download, click on Windows and download that version or download the Mac version. Finally, if you want these two drivers, this one and this one, I did put them together and uploaded them to my Google Drive just to make it easier for you. So if you want both of them, simply click this download link and they will arrive on your desktop in a zip file. Unzip them and you have both files. Okay, so you've downloaded your Realtek driver, you've installed it, you probably had to reboot and now anytime you plug any device into your laptop a window will pop up and I'll show you this window now okay so I'm about to plug in a device and this should happen to you I'm plugging it in the audio port now now up should pop this if it doesn't let's say you didn't click this box it's not enabled so i'm going to imagine that it didn't pop up okay so if this isn't clicked it won't pop up automatically so i'm going to click okay i'm going to unplug it again and this time i'm going to plug it in again and now as i plugged it in nothing arrived so all you need to do is type real tech here click on the audio manager this will arrive you still don't know which device is plugged in so what you need to do is right click where it says analog and go connect retasking now this will pop up make sure you click enable so it will always pop up so let's say it was on speaker out at the moment I click OK now I'm going to unplug it and plug it in again See, now it pops up. 
And now I can choose uh, between speaker, headphone, or headset if you're doing YouTube or if you're be teaching by Zoom. And I'm going to click mic in. So I'm going to determine that this is a mic in. Click OK. And that's all you need to do. So now we can run Audacity. Remember, make sure you download Audacity and install it. So let's open that program. And here's Audacity. What we need to do is make sure this is on. You can leave this as is. In fact, if you change to any of them, there isn't really much difference. And then make sure you click Microphone Realtek. You may have other microphones, like I've got a microphone on my camera. The microphone I'm using now is the Behringer. But I want to record, and I even can record from the USB mic. Remember I said I had a USB cassette? I can also record from that later. But for now, we're using the audio pin method, you know, from the headset audio jack. So you need to click on microphone. And once I start playing it, remember what I mentioned before, that sometimes this pin, if it's too far in, you won't hear anything. And there won't be any lines. But I'm going to press play now. And now I'm going to click this area here, monitoring. And this is the recording volume monitor. So it should appear if any audio is there. And there you can see the audio. Now, when it's in the red like this, this is bad. It needs to be below the yellow mark. So normally about here is good. So it should never, the red means it's clipping. And you can't recover that sound. You can't with editing or nothing. It needs to be in the green, a little bit of yellow, but no red. So this is fantastic. So I'm going to press record now. And you can see the waves being built. We, we can't hear anything, but that's because we're, you know, using the line in. Um, it isn't coming out of the speakers. But what we can do is once we stop this, if I stop this now, and once I press play, and there you can see the audio playing back quite nicely. Now, obviously, I've recorded the whole of this in advance, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Here's a little tip. If you want to hear the recording as it's going in, you can do that. But there's a little trick you need. So if you're not interested in this trick, then you can just simply rewind the tape, start again. So I'm going to stop. So now we know the level is good. I'm going to rewind the tape. We can delete this. Undo. Edit undo would be good. Undo record. Let's do that one. And now we know the level is good. What we can do is Click the monitoring, obviously, press record, and then press the cassette player. So I imagine this is our silence. And later in editing, I'm going to show you how to get rid of this silence. Well, it's a hiss. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that noise. OK, so now we know the record is going and we can just go away for 45 minutes, wait till it's all recorded and come back. I will show you one trick how to listen to this actual recording, because at the moment I can't hear it. But should you wish to listen to it, I'm going to show you a little trick. It'll only take a few minutes. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to do it while it's playing. All you simply do is, you go to the bottom here. It's all in the PDF document, by the way, that I've allowed you to download. Check the link below. You simply right click sounds. And then this pops up here. And then what you do is I'll move it to the middle. You simply click recording. Now I know it's recording on this microphone device. And you simply right click that device, go to properties, click listen, click listen to this device. Apply. And there you have it. 
Now, now, if you don't want to listen to it all the time, just now and then, remember you can turn it down here, but look, it's still recording and it's not interfering with the sound. But whatever you do, don't lower the sound on the actual player. Because if you lower the sound on the player, then it will disappear. Like this. If I lower it on the audio, see, look, it's just disappeared. So don't lower it on the audio. Leave the audio high and monitor the recording through these buttons. The recording has to be lower and this can be your volume. So remember if you want, you should turn off this mic listening. Otherwise, when you're doing a YouTube, your mic will come back at you. So let's show you how to turn this off. I'll make it lower. You simply right click, open sounds again, go to recordings, right click the microphone, properties, listen, and then we click, we don't want to listen to it. Thank you very much. Apply. Okay. And that's that. Very simple. Now, once we've got our audio recorded, the next stage is to save it and then edit it. So simply go to file and you can simply save project. So you can save project. And here is where you can save it. As you can see, the one I'm going to use later is called Rachel. So I'll just call this, um, AAA or something, call it that. And you'll find your Audacity documents in the Documents folder and Audacity. And here you can see the AAAUP file. Later we'll show you how to convert it to MP3, but for now we just saved it as an AAP file. So what I'm going to do is open the Rachel one, which is what I completed earlier. So in order to do that, I'm going to close this one and open up my saved file. Okay, so we've opened up our Rachel file, but what I want to do first is save it as a MP3 file. Most people think it's better to edit it in its WAV form because it's a bigger file and you'll get maybe a better um, editing value. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to export it as MP3. And I'll leave it as the name Rachel and save it. Now, when I save it, I've been asked to give the artist's name. So I'll do that. I'll put down Rachel. And the album title is EP1. I think that was her first EP. And the year, believe it or not, was 1999. I think, actually, I think she recorded it in 1991. That's what was on the label she gave me. She gave me a little tape. It was a friend of mine. So... We're going to save it. We're going to not put in the track title or the track number because that's going to be later when we divide these tracks into four. So simply save it as this. Okay, so it's been saved as an MP3. So now let's edit it first. The first thing we're going to do is normalize everything. And in order to do that, you simply Highlight everything, control A, or go edit, or select all. And then you go to effect, and normalize. You normally leave it at minus one, I've been advised. So it's just one below the peak. So let's do that. And there it's done. You can listen to a little bit of it. Okay, 
Okay, so now we need to get rid of some of the hisses that are in between tracks. And if we zoom into this particular track here, using the plus marker, you can see there's a wavy line, and this is the hiss. Let's listen to it. Yeah, it's not nice. So let's highlight that part of the hiss. And I normally do this three times, but you can always just do it once. So you simply go to Effect, Noise Reduction, and leave the settings as they are and just get Noise Profile. Click that once. Now you have to go to Edit or Select and Select All. Go back to Effect and you can simply say Repeat Noise Reduction and watch that line go thinner. Obviously, the larger the tape you have, the longer it's going to take to do this process. So be patient. And there you can see the line has gone really thin. Let's listen to that part again. Now that's nice and quiet. Like I say, you can do this three times. You could simply go Control A and do it again. Just go Effect. Repeat noise reduction, and I'll do that for the sake of this video. Okay, so now let's listen to that. Look at that, you can't even see the green lines. Now that sounds quite a bit tinny. So the last thing we're going to do here, or actually the second to last thing, we're just going to add some bass and treble. So let's highlight this part because I want to hear this part. Okay, and what we're going to do is just listen to the effect here of the bass and treble. Now, we can move this as we play it back. Start playback. Also, we can lower it. Remember, we can lower the volume a bit as well if it was too high. If you saw it bouncing in the red. See, that would be in the red. Okay, play it back again. Maybe add some more bass. Okay, that seems like that's nice. But what we're going to do is we're not going to apply it now because it won't apply it to all of it. We're just going to close this, select everything, go to Effect, Base, and it remembers what I did before. So all I have to do is click Apply. Close, and now if I play it, Okay, so that sounds a lot nicer, a lot more bassier. Now, just before we um, save the files individually, let's have a look at them. And notice this big lump at the end that I don't need. This is, uh, I let the tape run on too long. So you can simply click here and drag your mouse to the right till you have everything. And then go to Edit, Cut. And there you can see that track has been cut. And also the beginning might have been too long. So you can drag that, edit, and cut. Now we're going to select these four songs. I'm just going to call it song one, song two, song three. So for the first one, I'm going to put my marker here. It'll probably chop it here as well. And I'm going to call it song one for the sake of it. And to do this, what we do is we go to the, I think it's the edit and label and label control B. You can do it this way or simply do the keys control B. 
control B and I call it song one. Just, just for the sake of it. And uh, then I go to this area here and I'll do control B and call it song two. And uh, I believe this is song three. So control B and then I'm just gonna put song three. And the next one, or should I say the last one, is song four. So we'll break it there, control B, song four. And now that I have this labeled, what you can do, this is the magic part, what you can do is file, export. Now, normally you could export it as an MP3, as we did before. But this time I'm going to export this mp3 with multiples and watch what happens when I click it. You get the option where to put it. I'm going to put it in Audacity folder and I'm going to have the numbers before the label and I'm going to click export. And for each song it says what do you want to call it? Well this one's song one, track number one. Okay. Song two, track number two. So it remembers what you wrote down as for the name of the song. And now it will export it. Okay, and there you can see them labeled. I'm gonna click okay, go back into Audacity, and there you can see my songs with all the labels. Contributing artist, album, title of the song, the number, and I can click number one, And click number two. So there you have it. That's how you can save your cassette onto MP3 simply using audio cables. Now before you go, I'd like to show you how I did it very quickly with the USB. And for this, I don't even have to do anything. I can even leave that cable in there. I simply go open new. And this time, when I click down, I click on the USB for auxiliary. And what I'm going to do now is just simply uh, click the start monitoring and press play. And you can see it's recording. So I'll just record a little bit of that. I do believe it's a lot clearer on the USB connection than with the audio jack. So I'm going to stop there and press play. And that's how simple it is with the USB. You don't even need to worry about uh, Realtek audio or jacks and things like that because the USB is the best way. So that's it. That's how you can put your tapes onto MP3. But just before you go, I'd like to give you some extra information that you might find valuable when buying, uh, when connecting your audio devices. Remember when we put in our audio device, we could choose which one to put in. Remember that these two audio jacks only have two black lines, which means they have a left and right speaker and a ground. When you plug in these headsets, which are part of your iPhone or, or your phone where it has a microphone with it. You can use these when doing Zoom calls and that simply because it has an extra line here. You notice that it has a, an extra mic line. Just look at your, go and grab your cables now. Have a look at them and you'll notice, ah, I've got three lines because one of them is a mic. When that's there, when you plug it in, you can click headset and it will recognize your audio device as a headset so you can use the mic and the headphone speakers while you're doing a Zoom call. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you on the next video.